Ready. Hi, everyone. Welcome to the Alexandria Professional Webinar. And this one is all about getting back to work. So bear with me as we go through this. Um, before I begin, I want to do a full disclosure. My mom moved in with me, and generally she's quiet, but sometimes she gets confused. So I might at one time or another touch my daughter who's next to me and ask her to go take care of something. And the dog may need to go outside and whimper at the door. So <laughs> just bear with us. We're going to do this as professionally as we can for all of us. So the main thing is that some markets are opening up. And whether yours is opening up or not, this is going to be useful to you, and probably more so because you'll have some time to do the prepping. And you really should use this time to do the prepping. Here we are. Thing is hype get educated and informed. And there's a lot of official links that you can go to, and you'll have some of them in here, where you can get real information without the hype, because um, I just don't like hype. I like facts and, oh, what is that? No, oh, people come in. chat, yeah. <laughs> okay, sorry, listen to me right already. What the heck is that? And we have two computers going because we just upped our internet to maximum today. That's the dog whimpering. And uh, so we should have no problems as far as hiccups with the system, but just in case we have to, so that we don't have to slow it down. And if anything does happen, you will have access to the full recording afterwards anyway, and you'll probably want to review some of this. So please don't hang out with people who try to hide the situation because there's so much change going on that all of our good energies has to stay on point with what we need to do just to move forward. And I'm a firm believer, you've heard me say it, if you want, you can. So I want, and we are. Here we have, you're going to have links to all of these different um, locations, you know, for all the documents we're discussing that will help you afterwards. But these are some of the guidelines you need to consider um, as you re-enter your, your market. Some of it is for everyone, like the ISPA, the WHO, the CDC. These are all things that are for everyone, federal. But then your state guidelines, your state board cosmetology guidelines are for you to investigate. We can't do anything for that, but we are providing you with a link that will give you all links. And, and what it'll do, it'll actually list out in alphabetical order um, locations and uh, links for you to go visit to help you re-enter your market. Because I think the most important is that we comply with the regulations. Don't compare yourselves to the others, other states and other countries. If you want to get back to work, follow the process that your state is, is you know, imposing. Because in some cases, it really is an imposition, as you'll see as we go through this. But at the same time, at the end of the day, this is real. This is how each state is dealing with it. And we have to follow these processes in order to re-enter the market and get back to our businesses and you know making our money so let's look at welcoming your clients because that's where it's going to begin and the new trend right now new trend i guess the new protocol right now is the more you can do beforehand the better right so let's look at this get your information get them to fill out their things everything's so easy technology i think most of us use some kind of system um, that, you know, emails and texts and does all the appointments and everything. So if you're not as familiar as you should be, then make sure somebody on your team is and, you know, sending these processes to your customers that are booking appointments, just like staggering. These are all very standard. These are not so troublesome. Staggering your appointments so that people are not hanging out inside because, you know, some salons, I know when I had mine, it was, uh, especially in Canada, it was more of a social social place like people came even if they didn't have appointments to have a coffee we were very very social and we were a large large group so those days are gone so there you know you need to stagger the appointments they're even saying to keep people in their car or outdoors where if the weather's nice but preferably in their car waiting for you to text and say okay come on in it sounds ridiculous but if it's going to get us back to business and get some of us back to get our hair coloring done, then I'm okay to wait in my car because I do so much work in my car. I gotta tell you sometimes even when I'm on my way to the office and I park my car, I sit there with my music on doing some work or the music off and doing some, some meetings before I even get into the office. So 
it doesn't have to be a big deal. If you don't make a big deal about it, the customers are gonna get adjusted as well and it'll just become a new norm and everything will be okay and you'll do your business quite effectively as well. The same with, you know, make sure you update your media, uh, everything you have online with your new protocols. I think that's something I know we need to do as well for our studios because um, the more exposure you give to what you're doing to change with the times and protect your clients and protect your employees, the more respectful I believe people will be of who you are. And then the one is, you know, the questions that ask right there at the bottom if they have symptoms or if they've been around anyone who has symptoms. Unfortunately, at this stage, I'm not again saying, you know what, maybe we should reschedule or let's reschedule or how about we reschedule just to be safe. You know, it's your decision though. It's you and your client's decision. I'm not here to judge. I'm only here to share how I feel. Now, I don't have to go and do treatments anymore. I don't know how I would feel about everything if I had to go treatments, but I know one thing for sure, I would drop the hype and I would follow a protocol that would be the safest thing for my health, which I take home, and for my client's health, which they take back home as well. There are the priorities for me. Please write your questions down, eh, like as we go through, because this is not just about me, blah, 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 blah. It's gonna seem like a lot, and for some of you, it's gonna be just you know, affirmation of things you've already done, maybe some other webinars and things like that, and you're very familiar. So it, it's all good. Here in the reception area, you can see if you're looking at our photo, one thing we have to do, because this is an older photo, we have to go move those chairs apart, and we have to take away all the magazines. So that's something for sure we're doing. And I can tell you on the reception desk, we have to take away all the samples that we have there for clients to use from essential tonics and dermaware and, and comfort is there and um, also um, restore lotions or any of the dermaware. So we're gonna remove all those things. Okay, which is kind of a shame because that's what helps us to sell, right? But you can still do this in your treatment room. This is not just, you know, now you'll just have to have more time in your treatment room to discuss things with them because you can put it on them, you, they can touch it and feel it and smell it and all that good stuff. Take a little more time to share with your customer in the room instead of waiting for sometimes the receptionist to do it because some receptionists are trained to upsell as well. So just a little bit differences that we need to get into. Um, I do know, and I saw today um, in uh, Trinidad, one of our gals there, one of our educators, um, actually got her barbicide certification, sanitation certification. So again, check with your state board. That's the most important thing you need is something relating to your state to see what they have available for certification on sanitation, um, on health and things like that. And maybe there's something online where you don't have to go and more than likely and just get these things done because if you have these things up and people see it, oh, okay, you did this, that's great. And they feel more confident because that's what we need to instill in our clients right now is the confidence in us. And that's why I'm doing this with you guys today because I want you to feel confident in how we perceive things to be and how we would like things to, to be set up out there under the brand name of Alexandria Professional. Um, you know, so don't, don't display, disinfect all the points that the customers are at. That's your waiting area, your counter desk, your reception desk, all those things. The doors, like we wipe down the doors all the time. We have the cavicide wipes also. And, uh, and then you have to ensure that your um, reception area wears their masks. Now, some people are saying they should wear gloves. I don't believe, and I'm, again, I'm just sharing my opinion. This is all this is. And then as I share my opinion, I want you to know that maybe it's my opinion, but maybe your state has a different law. So my opinion doesn't win here. What trumps it, no pun intended, is your state. That So if they say you have to wear gloves, your reception, then they have to wear gloves. Here's why I don't believe we have to wear gloves. Because whatever we touch with the gloves also touches anything that's, you know, bacteria, virus, whatever is out there. In this particular case, the COVID-19. But let's say you don't wear gloves, but you wash your hands more frequent. You're literally washing it away anyway. And if everything's disinfected, your area is clear and clean. So I would hope we don't have to burden everyone with wearing gloves. But I know the masks right now are still mandatory. Even if, you know, 
I also don't feel you need to wear it all the time, but if it makes people feel better, I'm all about that for sure, 100%. Then there's another thing um, with the air purifier. I, I have to tell you, I didn't have enough time to investigate for you, and I know a lot of things are severely back ordered out there. Um, I'm still waiting for my soundproof stuff for, for my podcast, <laughs> and that's, still, that's been almost a month now. I still haven't received it. So there's priorities, but the air purifiers, if you can find one, are a great way to take away some of the, what do we call them? Droplets. Droplets, thank you. Um, and, and other things impure in the air. I'm going to give you a little story. My friend Sophie Lacus, some of you may have met her at our last year's symposium in Texas. Uh, we have, Everybody just loved when she spoke and all the great stuff she shared. Well, Sophie and I have been friends for dog years. And I remember when I still lived in Welland and we all worked at this restaurant. And uh, whenever I would go, because we know we'd share, go to each other's homes and prepare meals and things like that and just have a lovely time. Whenever I went to her house, I was a smoker, heavy smoker back then. I always carried, I had an air purifier when people didn't even think of air purifiers. And, um, and I carried this thing to her house and she would allow me to smoke in her house. And, uh, you know, we weren't who we are today. I don't smoke anymore. And even if I did, smoke, I wouldn't smoke in anybody's home anyway, but I, I'm not a smoker anymore unless I'm with Lisanne. And uh, so I would bring this air purifier and I would smoke and I would leave it there overnight and she'd leave it on. When she got up in the morning, she'd always say, Lena, you're the most cleanest, conscientious smoker I've ever met. Every time you come and you leave this, I wake up and I smell nothing. Just telling you, that's how good an air purifier can be. But I did do some research on the most effective way to use it for this situation, for COVID-19, in your treatment rooms, in your waiting area, your reception area, wherever you're going to be able to afford to put one because they, they're not cheap. Um, the best way, even if it's not on high, it'll still do some good. But the best way is to have it on high. And, and, you know, I don't know if the noise, it's not loud, but it's still a hum out there. I don't know if that will trouble you or not. Best I can say is try it. But if I were to do something like I will get them, we have to look, I will get them for our location in all our offices, training center, everywhere, because I know from experience they're worth the investment. So, again, my opinion, just sharing. And then we have, so... I have a link for that thermometer. This is what I have at home because we test every morning, especially because my mother's living with me. Now I pulled her out by the way of her retirement home in Canada. It's a whole other story, how I went from US to Canada to get her out and bring her back and not salesmanship. I just was very, very compelling. So now she's safe in my home. Temperature is actually the same as mine every day, 97.3, we're the same. So we check every day and you only have to hold it like two inches so you don't have to really burden your client but i would recommend you're coming through that door you're putting it there testing everything's okay the norm is i think from 97 to was it 96.9 i think no 99 to 90 yeah but from 96.9 no 97, 97 to 99, 99 the average is average. 98.6 yes okay so anything over it's your call excuse me dry but anything over that you might want to reconsider uh, rebooking them again your priority is your and your staff safety your families and their family as well you know and but if they're coming in and they have a fever then you know I would just rebook them but guys that's the same for you as much as we all want to make our money back right now for all the losses we've been through at the end of the day if you get up and you got a fever what are you gonna do risk everybody you know we all have to become very, very conscientious of how we're going to do our business right now. And temperature is an easy way to gauge everything on a daily basis. Your choice. Then we have our sanitizers. Now, I'm going to tell you two interesting stories. I know some of you are, or many of you are already using it, and I'm very grateful um, because, not, I mean, I like to call a spade a spade here, um, but the fact that we are able to sell these um, at the great speeds that we're selling because we're getting large local supplier accounts. And some of them are the vendors that we've used for, for many years. So, you know, Western New York supporting Western New York is really happening here. But um, it saved our company. It's 
one of the factors that allowed us to still be here and keep going forward and prepare all these projects we've all diligently been working from home on like all the office people so we have a lot more good stuff coming your way because we were able to stay in business but let me tell you two quick stories on the sanitizer. so you know i'm not bsing you um when my coo for the factory when we were shutting down said lean why don't we look at you know doing sanitizers i thought well oh, sanitize all that alcohol i don't know is it really important and then uh, when we did shut down, I thought, okay, Jay, let's look at this thing. And so we ended up formulating. And we I want you to know that not all sanitizers are created equal. Point in case. Um, Ellie's a wonderful um, salesperson here in Western New York for printing. And she's been my friend now for quite some time. She knows everybody. And she's just one of those lovely, lovely women that everybody trusts. And she says, oh, Lena, since you're doing this, you know, I've been following you on on, on Facebook and everything. She goes, you know, can you send me a sample? So I sent her a two ounce. She called me right away after she tried it. She says, my God, how is it that your sanitizer made my skin feel soft? She goes, I swear to God, I was at one of our customers last week. She didn't tell me who. And she tried, you know, because she got there. So she used her sanitizer just because it's right there. And she couldn't wait to get home and wash. Like she felt yucky. She didn't like the feel at all. Very drying, very strong. And, um, and then when she tried ours, she couldn't understand. And I said, well, look at the label. Like, look at the ingredients. We added aloe. And we used isopropyl alcohol, a very high quality, because it's so, like every ingredient in the AP products, like the oils we use, everything we use is a very high quality. Because everything in cooking, preparing, formulation, begins with first the integrity of the ingredients so <laughs> our sanitizer is no different than other things i didn't expect this to happen so with her i thought okay it's a friend yeah it's cute okay i know i tried and i said oops sorry i know i tried and i thought you know oh it feels really soft okay that's cool but there was a big local supplier that we approached and they said to jason you know well you know Yes, my, my people told me you had these things, but I looked at your numbers and it's really not quite the margin we need. And instead of arguing, excuse me, Jason said, okay, no problem. And he turned around and shipped two two ounce samples for them to try. That was on a Friday. They received it on a Monday, it's local. And that afternoon, this guy got in touch with him, the owner of this huge supply company. Um, so the owner called and said, hey, I'm ready to order and they ordered like a pallet full of everything sanitizer from ap because he said i'm going to tell you i've tried a lot of the sanitizers in this area because we have a lot of new manufacturers like all the breweries and you know western new york is known for its brewer brewery mastery and a lot of them turned into producing um, sanitizers because of the shortages all across america and he told us in his words this is the best i've ever tried now, one more story. I'm, I'm not just saying, oh, buy your, I'm telling you because I like to show the purpose and value of everything we do. So then we have a chemist company we use that tests all our batches of all our products to make sure the bacteria level da, 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 is all correct. Because, you know, we're an FDA approved manufacturer now. So we, we really comply with all the rules and regulations. When they tested our um, sanitizer formulation, they told Jason, wow. I got to tell you, we test a lot of the um, sanitizers in Western New York. You guys have the best. Well done. So that's why I'm proud now to say that this is becoming a whole new division in AP and it's not going away. I have a lot of good things. I've hired a really amazing like 50 year industry salesperson just this week uh, who knows everybody. So. I just go go to it. <laughs> His name is Harry. Go to it, Harry. Let me know if you need anything. So that's where we are with that. And, and that's mandatory as well. So these two things are mandatory. And the masks are mandatory. In most states, I believe, they're mandatory. So if they are in yours, then we have them available now. The ones that you're seeing here is just the, um, the typical medical uh, mask. Okay, and we're going to sell those in packs of 50s. So as soon as your clients come in, they have a choice. Some people are just gonna pump the sanitizer and uh, some are going to wash their hands and maybe some will do both. 
but they really should. We started the process um, before the shutdown where every client came in, we wiped down the door knobs that they, you know, the bars that they touched to get in. And then we took them to the uh, treatment room and had them wash their hands there because there's still nothing telling you. Uh, one of my friends was head nurse for like 30 years in Toronto. And Dr. Lonke, if you would listen to my podcast, he's a pulmonary uh, specialist and, and heart specialist and just so psh, so accomplished in, in the medical field. And he also states there is no better way than to wash your hands. That 30 second factor, the water rinses everything away. It's still the most effective way and very economical guys. And the precept to me, that's why we have it in all my stations in my house, is a really safe, gentle, pH balance, effective, cleanser so that's what we use because it's not too much harsh uh, chemicals that you know strip away the oils that we need to keep our hands good and then don't forget the restore little pump rehydrate right so with these um you know that you yeah so you know with the masks um it's a possibility that your clients are going to have to wear them as well right we'll talk about that in a minute so personal protection equipment, let's go through that now. Again, non-negotiable for you as a practitioner and your staff, no matter what position they're in, for sure, masks are non-negotiable. In the treatment rooms, we've always had gloves as a non-negotiable. It's just that now it's non-negotiable from beginning to end. Um, so, you know, we're, we're gonna, I'm telling you now, our team at our production facility does everything to prevent us from getting back ordered on any ingredient and item we need to keep you well supplied and safe. We had our problems with the pumps, but they're on our way now. So hopefully in the seven, 10 days, we'll have our pumps back for some of the sanitizers that we couldn't put the pumps in. It's a, it's another story, but, but understand this, that everybody in the world is suffering something, but we have been able and I'm kind of a real fickle person. I go direct to the source, like I'll be calling a specific manufacturer after this, because there's something we need that our supplier can't get. Won't be the first time I go direct and find a way to convince them to send it to us. I'm working on that. So these are, you know, mandatory. And, and here I should say, um, let me see here, sorry. Yeah, that one's the same as the medical. I want to talk about the medical masks. They're your standard masks that everybody's wearing every day. These are disposables. Um, if you're thinking of wearing a washable, you got to know that you got to wash that thing every day because it's going to carry everything it's picked up and, and you know, kind of filtered for you. So you can't really just keep it and wear it, and keep it in your car and just keep throwing it on. That's really not effective. And then the other options, this is where I'm gonna to talk to you. Uh, I swear to God, it's very challenging, but I think fear makes people paranoid. Paranoia creates hype and so on. So there are some states that are requiring all customers that come to us to wear their masks and not remove it. If that's your state's law. Um, you know, you can do eyebrows, you know, you might be able to do nose hairs, and comedones and things like that from here up. What are we gonna do about all this stuff? I'll tell you right now, there's no way I would let my hair grow because you know, even if I don't get dark hair anymore, I still get longer vellus hair that I've controlled from my menopause days, but they're still there. And um, so here are, as an AP pro, or as if you're here from, you know, you're not AP because this is not just exclusive to AP because this is re-entering, has nothing to do with our technique and so on. So if you're doing facials, I think this is ridiculous. And again, only my opinion because I did investigate it because I'm a supplier globally. And if I felt there was a true value, a safety, true value to these Pyplex glass things over top the customer as you go inside and try to do your treatments, I would be all over it. I did contact a few suppliers already. I was negotiating my pricing 
quantities, all those wonderful things, doing my due diligence. But by the time I was done researching, and, and especially after I spoke with Dr. Longkey, um, the problem with these plastics, they hold everything real tight. So not only would be would it be more complicated for everybody to do their treatments with these things, um, the value is not there because everything they're breathing, if there's if they're, what do you call it, droplets, if all those things are flying around, they're sticking, everything's sticking. You would have to disinfect this thing inside and out by protocol of whatever you're using from the manufacturer protocol process, every single client, that you would have to invest in several of these so that you can let them be disinfected and so on. Much rather, unless it's mandated, if it's mandated in your country or your state, I don't think we're mandated this in America, but I believe there are some European states that are mandating it right now. So uh, then you have to do a serious process of sanitation. But if not, better to have a great purifier absorbing everything away from both of you. You're wearing your mask, we'll talk about that in a minute. And if you can do full facial, then there you go, you just do it. And if they have to wear, then you can clean that up. But what if you really can't? I can't tell you. What you do in your room is your business. What you do between you and your client is also your affair. My concern would always be, what if somebody comes in, they're new, and certainly wouldn't let paranoia, you know, ruin my my day so in that case let's say you're totally willing to go by law and you're not going to just like rip it down and do the sugaring and remove the hair or do the treatment facial that you're doing and and, and then put it back up um, if you want to keep it and follow complete protocol i really encourage you to at the very least sell them the little two ounce kiss waxing with a couple of strips and, and spatulas for them to do at home Maybe you just show them quickly. I mean, we have tutorials and, and so many of you are putting out lovely how-to videos on your own bodies. And I think that's very cute because that's exactly how they have to do it on their own bodies. So that's another option. And, and you know, um, I'm hoping to interview this girl because we've had huge successes with the kiss waxing from our customers, which is you, the practitioners, selling to their customers because we don't know how long the shutdown is going to be. Some states open, but now we're hearing that California, some counties might not go back till July or August. I'm in the state of New York. I'm in Western New York, which is the second high uh, because of the dense of the population um, with, with you know new cases every day. So anyway, we're just being tolerant and patient and waiting for the day that we can all get back. So that'll be something serious for you to consider. Then, um, the face cover, what do you call it again? The face shield. Face shield, the Piplex face shield is another situation. Again, it attracts. Better you wear what we'll, I'll show you after the N95. Better you wear that. And we'll talk about that in a minute. The face shield, I think, is an overkill, just like the other one, because the air purifier is going to absorb what you don't want in the air. I think some people are going to have problems. You know, the breathing, it's going to fog up and, and it's going to collect moisture. And the more moisture, the more the bacteria, the more the virus sticks to. There's so much logic not being used by so many rule setters that it boggles my mind. But there's too many things going on at one time for us to kind of like fight or rebel against in peace um that's why i say sometimes you know let's just follow protocol and see what happens and how long it'll stay at this level versus maybe taper down after a few months and so on we don't know and the other one <laughs> the full suit okay i'm kind of over my menopause you know it, it happened when i was in my 30s so i've gotten over the worst part but periodically i still go i get a hike and a down. If I had to wear all that gear to do my clients, I would 100% pass out. I would definitely. Can you imagine full cover, full cover, all that heat, no escape? I, I would pass out. I think it's going to become an extremely unhealthy situation for most people. I'm told in Italy that they're supposed to use this full cover. 
I don't know if they're going to be enforced. I really think it's going to become a health problem. Now, Georgia just opened up, right? They're having, I believe, from what I read, they're having the customers wear like a, a you know, a smock. You know, when you go to hair salon, something that you put a smock on. They're having them wear a disposable smock and the practitioner wear a disposable apron or smock as well. Can you imagine all this costing? It's going to be crazy. So they have to. So again, with the links we give you today, double check all the rules and regulations. And you know, I'm going to tell you they're changing all the time anyway. So it's almost to your benefit every day, every other day, or at least once a week to see if there's any updates, any, any, you know, any reversal of certain regulations they put out there, which I think will happen as, as other symptoms happen to people who are way over covered to do these treatments. So yeah, keep following. Bumping up your current treatment hygiene protocols. Let me see. So there's a few things, right? Mask, gloves, black and white, disinfecting everything. Now, let me tell you that um, Cavicide is like a hospital grade, skin friendly. That's why I selected it dog years ago because I loved its purpose and value. And unfortunately, uh, they are super back ordered. Our suppliers have not been able to get us anything. But <laughs> disclosure again, that's the company. I found the manufacturer. I'm going to them direct and I'm going to sing my song and do my little dance and see what I can get from them. You can rest assured that um, if we end up with some cavicide real soon, um, they had a good heart because I'm going to be selling with heart as to why they need to. I don't want to bypass our supplier. Like, I don't even care if they credit them, whatever, and charge me whatever. Charge. I'm not looking for that. I'm looking for us to get supplied. And I'm all over it. Trust me. So let's pretend it's all there. Right now, I think we have, uh, I don't know, like uh, maybe, I don't know, five, six cases of. But the towelettes, the capsaicide towelettes are a quick fix. They're not the spray because we're supposed to spray, not wipe it down. A lot of people don't watch. You've got to read the manufacturer's recommendations. you got to spray and let it dry for at least, I think, five minutes. I can't remember exactly, but it's a good amount of time. And then you can wipe if you want. But you should always wipe it down first to clean any residue. Capsaicide is not something you use to clean off the beds, the treatment uh, tables. Cavicide is a disinfectant, so you got to use your warm water and cloth, wipe everything down. You can even use soap and that'll kill the bacteria anyway. And, um, and then when it's all wiped down, then spray your cavicide and let it dry and do its job. Not like you got to cover it all. Got to make sure it covers everything. Just like when you wash your hands, you don't quickly. No, you got to go every finger around it. You know, take your precautions and take your time. You know, an ounce of an ounce of something is worth a pound of cure <laughs> something prevention. like that prevention but preventions <laughs> sorry there you go so anyway that's about the cavicide and you will be getting an email from us whether we're going to be on back order for how long more or if i have some good news for you in which case we're not going to let anybody hoard i'm sorry whatever we have we're going to try and figure out how many salons can use what we have and and take it from there so we'll, we'll put a minimum, a maximum order you can do when we have it. Otherwise, we know what will happen. So other little things you can do. Um, so I've never been an advocate of sharing linens. To me, it's like if you're laying somebody on a linen, you know, you just take it off and put a fresh one. And you already know, for me, I just cap aside the beds before and after, and I put people on. And if it's going to be a bikini, I usually put a little towel under there naked bum bum because it just feels better for them instead of going on cold leather or pleather, whatever you're using. Um, so then there's like um, protocol to your linen as well. Again, check with your state because some won't allow you to leave it in the room throughout the treatments of the day. You have to kind of remove it after each client. Get them. I so recommend that one. You'll have access to this after. If you don't know the proper way, this is actually how I already removed mine anyway. It's always going from here so that you, you know, go 
under and over so that you're not touching anything. Just follow, you'll have a guide after, just follow that process, it works very well to contain everything that it touched. And you know there's another thing you can do before you take them off as well. Free set, three minutes, wash everything, rinse it off, and then you can throw them out. Then they're totally free of the virus. So a few reminders and announcements. We're almost done, so I hope you're writing your questions. The triple check. This is all on you, ladies and gentlemen. You have to check with your states and keep checking because protocols tend to change, laws tend to change, kind of like that, that government loan they gave, kind of like seeing the laws are changing on what's gonna happen with that. Oh well, it is what it is. Um, different levels of PPE, so please make sure you check what you have to wear. I think look at this, review this PowerPoint after that you'll have the link to, and then go to all the links that are relating to you and get informed and prepare. Now's the time, like you have time, you're sitting at home. Now's the time to prepare your, um, your appointment wait, taking. Wait, 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 oh. wait a sec. You just appeared for a second. Oh, sorry guys, I'm glad she's there. <laughs> Let me just double check. Let me entertain you. Thank God I own like, uh oh, where's my PowerPoint? The bandwidth. Bandwidth. Two I'm seconds, sorry. we All almost made it to the end. Can you hear me? We just want to make sure, can you guys at least hear her if you can't see her? Yes. Okay. That's okay. good. I need to switch them back over. Okay. Give me one sec. Mm. Oh, it should be good. Let me reshare the PowerPoint. Yeah, because I need it. <laughs> Okay. Wait. Voila. Mm, it's not. No, it's here. It's mom. They can okay, see. Wait, wait, wait. It's coming up. Okay. Okay. Sorry, guys. That's why I have her as my sidekick for life. <laughs> okay. So uh, I wanted to get. Uh, mandating levels, checking your 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 um, standards because, oh yes, now's the time. Use this time to prepare um, your changes in accepting clients, uh, to prepare how you take appointments because now you need extra time in between to make sure everything is sanitized with the time it needs and so on. So prepare all your rules and regulations, you know, your COVID-19, re-entering whatever, rules and regulations, customer rules and regulations. Here's what we want to do for you to protect you and your family, respect the protection of us and our family, something like that. Now's the time to set everything on your Facebook, your Instagram, your, uh, you could do your own little videos, uh, text messaging, reminders, and also um, emails and or your own e-blast your customers. So, uh, yeah, okay, that's nothing. And, and again, these are all little reminders. Just go and learn what you need to do. These are our prices for our um, sanitizers. These are your prices. These are our salon prices. This is an item you can actually um, retail to your customers as well. And I encourage you to because once you try it, you'll know why people are loving it and it'll be easy. You know how I am. You have to be an advocate of what you represent to feel what I feel. Masks, pre-orders starting today. Um, they're 450. These are KN95 is just a slight different in, in design, but it's the same as N95. There's three different slight changes in designs between Europe, uh, Asia, and um, America, North America. So this is called KN95, and it is 100% um, accepted from a manufacturer that's 
uh, America accepts as an importer, exporter to our country. So out of a hundred or so, um, they were only one of something like 20 that were 100% accepted as super high end and they follow protocol and their product is what it is. It does what it needs to do. So we have them available. I'm going to tell you right now, I've only ordered 5,000 units because they are not cheap. Cannot retail these. There's no margin to up from here. So whatever price you see for our masks to you are the same price because we will be selling it to consumers because not these ones because they need it as well. But like more the daily masks, there's no margin in these things, guys. And and we're not looking to make money from it. We just make sure that, you know, we're covered and and it is what it is. So that's your price. That's how much they cost. They come in. A, I don't think we have another pack. They come in singular packages as well. So they're really well sealed as they come to you. And so what I can tell you about this, I mean, you can read all that stuff that's there. And, and that's a definition and, and description of all the, the N95s anyway. But what I can tell you that I've been doing research on is that some people wear more than one day. You can keep one for the whole day. Probably better if you don't wear makeup because it'll like the face mask. I can't believe it. I don't know what I'm going to do about my lipstick. But, you know, um, you don't want, you know, when you're taking breaks in between or maybe removing it and, and putting it back on, it's filled with makeup and lipstick, right? So that's entirely up to you. But if you don't wear makeup and if you keep your clients, you know, so separate, there's a possibility you can make one stretch for at least a couple of days. Um, I don't know how to decide if you do that or not. This is really up to you to make your own decisions. I personally think one a day, one a day might be good, but I did read and do your own research that it is acceptable to use it more than one day. Totally up to you. But like I said, do your research. Pre-orders today, they are on their way. We're anticipating again that 10 to 10 days to 14 days. So we're limited. You think 5,000 is a lot, it's not. Um, I'm thinking maybe a maximum of one month. So maybe like 30, if you want to extend that where, you know, those 30 masks last you two months, that's entirely up to you. Um, but we, we will sell them in packs of 30, like per one month mm -hmm. per one person. These aren't being sold in packs. No, I know, but they can order up to 30 oh, okay. maximum quantity. Thank you. Maximum quantity of 30 packages, which is one per package, per sealed package. Um, that's to make sure that we supply as many people as we can. Now, if we see these fly off, you know, if we get enough orders and we know it's arriving and we know that most of it is sold, I will reinvest in it. Um, I have to be careful. This is all about managing monies to make sure, because this is a new item and it's not a money maker. So we have to make sure that we really are careful that we're not going to end up with dead inventory. So if you're going to order from us, place your orders now so that you're in queue. And as soon as they arrive, they go straight. Order right away again so that we keep you supplied with these um, 95s and 95 masks. Far better than the standard medical one for what you do. But the medical one, you can retell them. Well, you can't really retell them because there's no margin. These ones come in packs of 50. They're $29. Again, it's um, it's not a money maker, and there's no way we can say sell it for more. I saw one company online selling it for $38. I think that's too high. I can't go any lower than 29. Uh, maybe in the future, as we get even higher, you know, if we get into hundreds of thousands ordered at a time, we'll get better pricing. Uh, right now we're into the higher thousands, but it was the lowest price we could get for now. So as we do better for these, because these are so mandatory, they're not, you know, they're not a luxury item, um, we'll pass on the savings as well. So whatever you see here is your cost, and we're going to do the same thing for the consumers so that they can share these 50 packs with their family members for those that want to use these. And then, voila, it's the end. Okay. Oh, Before you get into the we question, know it. you froze a little bit. Can you repeat the linen portion? 
what you were talking about with the linens? Oh, okay. So with the linens, um, encouraging you, I did read some bylaws that say, you know, try not to use it for more than a couple of people. I'm going to tell you, if there's one rule I can definitely put out there, don't even use linens. If you have to use linens, strip it per client. Don't try to save a set of linens for another client. Strip it, roll it, put it in a bag, take it out of your room, put it in an area that's safer for your laundry to be. Don't keep it in your treatment room. For us, I never use linens for the sugaring part of our business. But when we do our facials and body wraps, we use a lot of linens. But for sugaring, we just spray Cavicide um, before and after. And what you do after the client is you wipe off any residue, sugar powder, whatever there is, because a Cavicide is not to wash the bed. It's to disinfect it. So I would encourage you to use um, a cloth and a precept or soap, any soap, and wash the bed that way, wipe it down, and then spray. And when you spray the Cavicide, you've got to cover every bit of it if you want it to be fully disinfected. Manufacturer's uh, protocol, let it dry, then you can wipe it down. I think it's after 5, 10 minutes. I really don't remember right now, but I know it's at least 5 minutes. you got to let it dry, leave it alone. And that's for any surface that you're disinfecting in your room with Cavicide, you have to let it dry. You don't just spray and wipe. It is not a cleaner. It's not there to wipe things off. It's there to all, you know, get absorbed in all the pores, porous effects of any material you're looking at to disinfect. So I'm ready, <sighs> ready for questions, guys. <laughs> I hope this was helpful, at least a little bit helpful. Okay, so let me... So I'm going to start from the first ones we received. Oh, refresh page again. Okay, there we go. So I'm just going to start from the first, some of the first ones we received. Um, so someone wants to know, do you have any feedback about fans? My treatment room is warm, and normally during the summer months, I have to use a tower fan because both my clients and I get warm and sweaty. Are fans dangerous because they blow particles in the air? Can I use a fan and an air purifier? I would definitely use a fan and an air purifier. The air purifier is going to absorb a lot of the particles in the air to begin with. I think if I could say one, like go get yourself an air purifier. I don't know what's available out there right now, but I know we're going to be on a hunt ourselves. So I strongly recommend that. And my daughter, one of my daughters does sugaring as well. And she's also somebody who gets very hot and she has one of those tall stand, um, Fans as well. There's no way I'm going to be able to take that away from her. So her room is definitely going to have her air purifier. Yes. So someone else asked, um, just for clarification, if we're wearing washable masks, I'm assuming is what she means. Mm -hmm. um, we're wearing a new one for each client anyway, right? Even if it's washable. Oh, especially if it's washable. Um, well, no. The thing, if you're wearing a washable mask, it has to have the right filters that you can insert. They're not as good as your N95. You know, if you get your N95, you can wear that all day long, right? So I, I, you're not going to get the same protection. I mean, I know there's a lot of cute stuff out there, and I know my daughter ordered a really, really cute one, like little, really sweet one. And I saw one with a cat coming up, and I'm thinking, oh, I'd like it. But they're not as protective as the medical mask and definitely not as protective as the N95s. So make your decision on that. Really up to you. Uh, yeah. No, no. So the reusable ones where you insert a filter. The filter. They're pretty much on par with the, the disposable. Medical. Okay. Yes. N95 is still better, which is why it's best for a professional to use as opposed to a regular consumer. Yeah. I spoke to my friend I was telling you about who was um, head nurse in, in Toronto actually this past week. And we talked about this as well. And because, you know, I really want to know facts and, and I don't want to have to order N95s if I don't have to, because they're not a cheap item for us or for you. Um, but hands down, she said, you know, they're the ones working with the clients, Lena. It's like we're the nurses. They're seeing the people. They should be wearing their N95 day in and day out. So it's always up to you. Um, so as my daughter said, and I know she did this research on this, the, the, the ones that you can wash, that you can insert your filter is like having the disposable uh, medical ones, which are more for daily usage, you know, going outside, going on a walk, going to the grocery store or doing your shopping, 
whatever, stuff like that. So I leave it to you, really. Just take care of yourself and make sure you do the right protocol for whatever it is you're going to utilize. Um, so some a couple of times this was brought up. Can the masks be purchased in Canada, the pack of 29? Um, and separately, because it's just pack one of 50 person. for 29. Yes. Yes, it can. Um, but it's not $29. We had to add. It's the first time. So in 30 years, <laughs> we had to do the exchange rate at least at 25 percent, because, like I said, this is a no margin, basically. And if I didn't, I would end up losing. So we had to increase that price to reflect the Canadian dollar versus the U.S. dollar because we buy them in U.S. dollars. And it's the only item we did that to because we had to. So, first so time. that same person also asked if they should remove all their retail from their retail area. Um, we're not doing that, but nobody really touches it. It's not there for people to sample. So if you want to limit it, it might be something we do as well. Just limit it. Um, but we're still keeping ours there because there's nowhere to hide it per se. And we're still in business to sell. You know, there's there's a couple of ways this can go. You can still do your retail, whether it's with AP products or other products, okay? Retail in general. Um, or you can do, like on the uh, ambassador program, you can also do that. Like, there's a reason why I put that ambassador program out, and it's, it's becoming very successful. I'm very, very grateful that we've received a lot of people thanking us for making it available to them. I don't know if it's going to be something that continues to go, I have a feeling with some of the problems we're going to have more long term into the next year or so more, I think things are not going to be like we had. And so the sooner we just go with it and accept it and forget what was and live with what is, the easier our lives will be. And, and the job is to create our revenues in the smoothest flow that we can. So we're here for you. So someone asked if they can keep curtains and bed skirts for the treatment room. I would get rid of those. I can't believe some people are using, I was shocked. I don't remember where I saw it, using um, clear shower curtains. Plastic is sucking everything in. It's sticking to it. So you don't need that hanging around. The cleaner, the simpler your area, the less cluttered, the better for you and your customers. Yeah. Okay, someone asked, what about cleaning masks via, or sterilizing masks via UV sterilizer? This, I, I think this is something they need to research a little more. I was going to say. There has been preliminary research that UV sterilization could be helpful, but there's nothing concrete. Um, so this is kind of up to you and your research. We can't give a definite answer right now. So... I would do exactly what Nadine suggested. The only thing is I don't know how, I know there's a light that can show if there's bacteria that you can, you know, kind of go over things. Excuse me. So I would look to the WHO or what's the other one, CB? Uh, CDC. CDC. I, I would look to those companies, maybe even like go online and, and ask them, you know, and when you get the answer, go on our support group and share with everybody. This is what this is all for, right? Share with everybody, even guys, after all this, you know, I want you to continue to discuss on the support group. If you need me, just call me out. You know, I'm there. So check for yourselves on that. I've not researched it. I'm going to be very honest, but it'll be interesting that we all try to see what we find and share it on the support group. Because what if it's a viable way? How wonderful would that be? One. You only have to buy one. Maybe you buy a few just to have. But, you know, N95, maybe you just buy like, I don't know, five, 10, just to have them, but then you can use them again. That would be great. Cause like I said, it's not a money maker. This is like, we're doing this for you at the end of the day, because we have to, we don't have to, but we want to, because we have to wear them. That's what I wanted to say. Yeah. Um, so, uh, do, so there's one person who really is inquiring. Do we have even if it's in your email um the pricing for canada for the masks both versions yeah we do um we do we do we do we do we do if you want to text brenda <laughs> or call her i'll get it for you right now just so you have it i could add 25 percent more i believe i like it's not even a full exchange rate i just went with a flat 25 percent so 29 plus 25 percent or 450 plus 29 percent 
Are you guys getting used to me not having my hair anymore? <laughs> God. Sorry. Someone's asking about the support group. I'm just providing the link. Uh, okay. Uh, the support group is for Alexander professional people only. Um, if you're non AP, because I know we have a lot of people that registered who are non AP, I'm grateful you're here because this is for us in one community in the beauty industry. So okay. welcome. Let me call Brenda. Oh. <laughs> oh, she's Karen. She's, Karen's calling. Brenda okay. Too. Okay. Um, uh, what else? So someone did ask. Um, so she has scrub tops and changes between clients. Is that okay? I suffer from menopause and the masks already heat me up. So, yeah, no kidding. Um, I think that's perfect. Now, if you're asking my opinion, I say that's perfect because you're literally changing between clients. And the scrub tops are more like, you know, what they're telling us to wear anyway, although the ones they're telling us to wear is disposable. But you're changing anyway. So, you know, that may be the way of the future is everybody wears scrubs that can be easily changed over. So kudos to you. Yeah, I would do. That's what I would do, actually. Why aren't we thinking of doing that for our people anyway, getting into the scrubs? Changing all these disposable things. Also, all this money that goes to waste every day for thinking every day for years to come. That's like crazy nonsense crazy so where can we order the masks in canada at our shop uh ca what is it shop can, dot yeah i'll put the link she'll, she'll put the link there uh someone asked no masks for the usa no we we will have them for both yeah, so somebody's asking about the ambassador program. Yes, it's for everyone, not just AP, because there are a lot of professionals that could use some help in creating revenue. Um, if you want to be involved, you're more than welcome. Welcome. And uh, also um, for consumers, not at the rate that you get as a professional because you're losing revenue and, and uh, you need to make more. But also the consumer is nice because we're going to help spread the word on our retail products and that'll just make the salons retail more anyway. So I think it's a triple win. Consumers make 15%. It's kind of a little supplementary income for them if they're, if they're going to really promote it. And uh, at the same time, I, I get excited because I think it's going to move our retail products better, which means we're going to have better skin, which means that our treatments will be easier to do then. So it's a triple win for us. Yeah. No mask for USA? Who's asking that? Of course we have masks for USA. <laughs> um, so someone asked, can we use fitted vinyl covers for our treatment beds? Fitted? No, don't do vinyl, guys. I just finished telling vinyl sucks in everything. It just sticks everything. That all the viruses, bacteria just stick. The droplets stick. Don't use vinyl uh, to cover everything, please. Spray cavicide on your bed. Use a new sheet every customer. You can do that. Or use the paper over. Those are easy things that are disposable that we already do. Vinyl is the worst thing. I think it's the stupidest thing that they, they're, they're doing these things in, in this uh, Pyplex plastic thing. Uh, so somebody said something about, of course we have um, everything in America. Just call uh, .com, shop.com, whatever the, our link is. <laughs> somebody can type, but maybe Nadine will type it. Um, yeah, for sure. That's where everything comes first. This is where a factory is, is in America. Mm -hmm. Ah, shrubs with AP logo. Thinking about it. <laughs> Michelle, <laughs> thinking about it. A lot of money I made from retail sales on new sanitizing. Oh, I'm so glad, Stacey. Thank you for sharing. Um, okay, but you say you've spent your money, but you've made money, right? I hope, Stacey, because... It's great, it's an easy sell. Uh, so I'm a distributor in Canada and we can't even get masks for my customers. Ah, so you're a beauty supplier for someone else in Canada? Not AP, right? Uh, Kathy Blair? Um, let me see if I can reach her one more time. Email me at lk.ap at outlook.com. I'll remember you, Stacey, and I'll, I'll help you out. Um, okay, so Karen is saying five seventy-five Canadian is what our okay. pricing is so, real for quick, the N95s. That, 
That that confirmed what I was just trying to fix. So the Canadian price is on the U.S. website right now. <laughs> There's a little accident with the pricing. Oh my God! So yeah, it's four seventy five for the N ninety fives, and it's going to be around thirty six Canadian for the pack of fifty. The U.S. price is what we said originally in the webinar. So it's where we said four fifty in the webinar. Yeah, four fifty for yeah. the can ninety five, twenty nine for the pack of yeah. fifty in the U.S. Yes. In Canada, it's going to be five seventy five Canadian for the can ninety five, yeah. and around thirty six for the pack of fifty. Voila, voila. Um, you see, my staff are working very diligently with everything, but still hiccups can happen. We fix them and move move on. All good. Catherine just shared our shop um, Alexandria Pro site there for the U.S. Oh, Alina, thank you for joining us. I'm glad you enjoyed this. Uh, yes, not AP, not for AP, wish I was. <laughs> Don't um, worry, so, just email me, we'll, we'll do something. So I'm wondering if, I don't know if you answered this one or saw it, so that same question about the vinyls, so she kind of reiterated, their beds are vinyl um, and they have some rips, so they need to be covered, what would you oh, suggest? Um, then, then do a sheet, then do a sheet or, or the paper roll to cover it but still disinfect it every time. You might look at getting it reupholstered though, because that split is good. It's gonna like impact in there. Mm -hmm. I know someone was typing. Anything else? Yes, I agree, Heidi, bad for the environment to throw everything away every day. But you know what? If we can find ways to eliminate, reduce, um, what do you call it, you know, um, less is best kind of thing, you know, feng shui, super Japanese style, nothing around, then the easier it is for you. If you can wear scrubs, um, you know, and change like that one girl suggested, suggested, professional suggested, then, you know, there's a way that you don't throw away all those things every day. So I just say, you know, be careful, do the best you can. And hopefully as every month evolves or even six months at a time evolves that, um, um, you know, the, the regulators of the world come out with different processes or protocols for us, kind of like tapering down some of the rules and regulations because we'll be in a better place. Because, you know, we're not getting out of this in any way different we're all eventually going to catch this it's not a death sentence if we do that's how we're going to be able to strengthen everybody's immune system and, and go forward um, so it, it is quite a long process i believe from what i've heard or listened to that we're um, involved with now and when they say they don't see a, a normalcy to this until 2022 um, i i believe it but it doesn't mean we can't smile every day and just do things in a different way and and then it becomes very easy for us to to comply and and look at it as okay this is where we are today let's do the best we can together so there was a couple together. more yeah. um someone asked let me just find it what about non-woven disposable sheets the non-woven is like the material for the non-medical masks right uh, disposable sheets again of course but that's so much money and so much garbage thrown out. So if you can do anything that is compliant with the protocol of safety for you and your clients, your families, I recommend you do as much as you can without having to be wasteful. I personally would like to see us be that conscientious. Otherwise, can you imagine hundreds of thousands of salons if we have to throw away bags and bags every day? I, I don't know. So someone, It's another problem, right? It's another problem. So I just want to check if it's the same person. No, so um, I don't know if you're going to know what this is, but um, someone mentioned amber wax pads. It's made of vinyl, too, and easy to disinfect after. I'm not familiar with what that is, though. Oh, like for them to sit on when you get waxed, right? Um, yeah, if, if that's what you want, go ahead. Like your, your 
the table you use for your treatment should be easy to disinfect. That's what we do. We disinfect them before and after every client. Sometimes before as they come in and they're changing because it's got a few minutes to dry. Even we know we did it before, it's still subconsciously for the person to see it. You know, oh, good, good, right? Okay. Or the papers or just, you know, a little towel that you put in the laundry after just so they're laying on that. You know, there's no wrong for you to choose. Just try to be as um, eco-friendly as you can and as economical as you can for yourself as well because there are some things to the new way that are going to limit a little bit how we make our money unless you up your prices. And it's kind of hard to up prices when everybody's in the same boat looking for money, right? Um, so. Oh, sorry. Did you mm -hmm. have more to say? No, no. Go ahead. Um, so someone asked, I'm working from home. Do you suggest any extra precautions uh yeah try to keep wherever your room is like you know hopefully it's separated from your home a clear way path just to your area and uh the same thing we're telling you here for a professional environment test their test take their their <laughs> their temperature um before they even enter your home make sure you disinfect the doorknobs and and or handles that they touch and then follow everything else we talked about here. Just follow this whole process, you know. Don't touch any of the walls as you're going into wherever your room is. Because you know what? That's a very good question because my gut is telling me we're going to have a lot of people working from home because a lot of people are not going to be able to go back to what they had before. You know, they probably already lost their location. They couldn't afford. Most, most of the people in the beauty industry, um, you know, work and pay bills work and pay bills kind of like from hand to mouth right so they don't have this all this free money to keep those locations going and because it's going to be a slower pace as we re-enter it's going to be hard to make enough money to pay for those locations i think a lot of people are going to go back to the, be driven back to their homes personally yeah so finally um do the sanitizers come in gallon size so uh the the disinfectant, like the cavus, oh, the sanitizers, yeah. wake up. They come in half gallon sizes. They come in half gallon sizes. Um, sorry, I tried to do the gallon, but I couldn't get the price down low enough. And um, I just couldn't do it. But the half gallon was affordable. It will be affordable to you. And we do have the price for that. Um, somewhere over the rainbow <laughs> we do have it it's on our price list I know that I, I finished all this here last night and gave it to Brenda and Katie and blah 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 to get everything onto our websites and onto our price list and so on yeah um so I just got a text message from Catherine it was a couple minutes ago but just to confirm the masks whether it's in the US or in Canada it's one price for the professional and the consumer yeah i i stated that earlier i hope you well you'll see through this anyway and this is recorded um one price only there's just no margin for us to do an extra retail pricing so there's no way you could sell it to your customers and make profit unless you're buying it let's say in the state you're buying it at 450 and your customers say, oh, i'll pay you five or i'll pay you six dollars or whatever you want to do that you don't need to tell anybody. It's not going to trouble me at all. I just couldn't validate going higher than what we had to do to cover our expenses. I just couldn't validate it. So that's why I did it the way I did. Yeah. So someone had asked, how about working mobile in other people's homes? Would you re recommend not doing this? A greater risk possibly? Yeah. You're better to stay in your controlled environment. Whether you're doing it at home, be very stringent, very strict, especially if you're at home, but even in your a professional location, meaning, you know, a brick and mortar location for business, um, you know, follow the processes, keep it the safest place you can be. You have no control when you go to somebody else's home. I wouldn't recommend that. I would have them come to you. Again, my opinion, if you feel a hundred percent confident in the person that wants you to go to their home go do it i wish my hairstylist would come to mind <laughs> so um someone kind of asked again the same person also what are your thoughts on working in a spa that has floor to ceiling curtains instead of walls so that's kind of separating the each room yeah um i unless in, they're interchanging those daily yeah in 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 the world post covid 
um, I don't think it's a good thing to have any kind of fabric hanging around day in and day out. I'm sorry, I really don't. People are going to need to make adjustments to comply with the safety for everybody because you can't disinfect those every day. What are you gonna do? Spray a gallon of cavicide all the way through because you can't miss any part and then let that absorb, like, that's nonsense. Build a wall. There's like different economical walls they can build as well. There are things out there. I'm just double checking. Does anybody feel like we missed your question? If you feel we missed a question, because there were so many, type it in at the bottom so then it's the very first one I see or we see. You need to scroll down if you want to see the new ones. Oopa. It'll refresh. It's not in there. We go. So someone. You're was welcome, taking... Rachel. Okay. In my state, oh, it's illegal to work in a room without enclosed walls, floor to ceiling. Okay. Then, you know. If this is the same person that was talking about the curtains, then it, I would ask your owners to build a wall all the way up. Um, so someone did ask, what do you recommend for covering a window? What do you recommend to use for covering a window? Ha, huh, that's a good one. So you don't want to have curtains, that's for sure. Um, if they need mm. to, but those are, you need a material that you can take down, down and wash and interchange with another one every day. Yeah, and like that's a chore and a half. So if you're talking about a window in a treatment room, that's one thing um, I would probably see about getting them uh, super tinted so that there's no fabric. You're still going to have to, you know, disinfect the windows and stuff, but something easy to disinfect. Um, what about blinds? Someone put that in. Yeah, I, I thought of blinds, um, but they are also um, porous. You know, they're also plastic. They, it's the droplets we're always concerned about. However, with the, it's not 100%, but with a purifier, you're going to reduce a lot of that. And you could spray. You're absolutely right. You could spray blinds, you know, whether they're verticals or, or horizontals. You could spray them every day as well. So that might be better, but definitely not fabric. Mm hmm especially if it's in your room, uh, treatment room. Someone put down, um, just so that we verbally say it, that um, some people do have window stickers that's the full size with different designs that would make it easier to, to, to wipe them. down. Yeah, exactly. And you know, they do have um, a material that you can lay flat that stop, like, you know, it's like a etchy, like it looks like snow or something, you know, um, that you can put to, to prevent people from seeing. And also it keeps the, the room brighter, but without any see-through. And you can spray that every day or after every client if you want to, yeah. I, you know, guys, it's not, I, I always say this, it's not complicated. Um, you just need to be logical about everything. And if you're in doubt, you're probably right. You know, if you think, oh, I don't know if I should, you're probably right. So. Go the other way and do the right thing, the right decision for yourself. Yeah. So I think that's it. If anyone has any questions that we didn't answer, you can email us at yeah. info at alexandriapro.com or always reach out on our support group as well. Yeah. I really hope that if you have anything to share or you tried anything that we're talking about and you like the result, anything, share on the support group because we're really... And anybody who's on here, I'm going to take advantage of this. We're cleaning out our database while we're all working from home. So we're calling you guys. We're like emailing you. We're calling. A lot of people are not taking your calls. We're not trying to harass you. We just want to make sure your information is updated, that we have everything correct, that you're registered online because the best place for you to place your orders right now are online um, and that you are registered, obviously, with our support group. and just to chat about things together. So please respond. I've got a team of four, five people trying to reach out to all of our customers to get this done before the end of the month. So be a sport, <laughs> help us out. So, so someone yeah. asked, they just ordered the masks, how long approximately? You said originally about 10, 10 days? 10 days to two weeks before they arrived to us. But I guarantee you, the day they hit here, we are gonna put a blast out. Catherine will blast everything else everywhere. Okay, they're here, they're getting ready to ship out. Yeah, super excited about this. Because it, it's not easy. 
getting supplies right now, I, we are so diligent. <laughs> it's hard to say no to us. <laughs> so someone asked what the number would look like when we're calling you guys. Some people, it'll pop up as Alexandria Professional. Others, the actual number, I put it in the chat, will be one 800 957-8427. And we are sending emails as well if we ever miss you and voicemails. Okay, so let me ask you, the ones that are working from home, are they going to have, excuse me, a different link number, like a different extension number that they may not recognize? No, it doesn't matter what extension. The phone number that's coming to them will either read Alexander Professional or the 800 number. Or the 800. Okay, something new. I thought maybe people weren't answering because it looked like spam. Because if I don't know somebody who's calling me, I don't answer because they're like a dime a dozen. I think that's pretty much it. I think we're done. All right, everybody. Thank you so much for your attention. Stay healthy, stay safe. And I hope uh, everything goes well with your re-entry. Share, share, share as you re-enter. Share your experiences day by day on the support group so we all feel it and we prepare more also. And give us about a day to get the um, video recording up on Vimeo and then we will send an email out to everyone who registered with a link to re-watch this webinar in addition to any of the documents or the resources links that were mentioned. Please get to England. Somebody said, please, Dion. We are. You need, you need to call, contact Pamela Kennedy. Okay. That email, lk.ap at outlook.com. Email me. We'll send you the information. <laughs> we are. Slowly. <laughs> okay. Bye, Thanks, everybody. everybody. Take care. See you next time.